what is up youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed i guarantee before i get started i want to say 16k like sixteen thousand. y'all love me well one of them is my sister so fifteen thousand dollars right now and now that y'all love me i'm so i'm just so elated and so happy and i just love you guys back thank you so much for the good positive energy you leave in my comment section i love you all so much i have a lot to do today i actually have a whole nother video to edit that i'll probably post tomorrow because i've been promising my girl terry b in the comments that i was gonna give her a good old makeup video telling the products that i love and that i don't love so much i filmed the video like a week ago but i just haven't gotten around to editing it so i'm gonna edit it girl get it out just for you without further ado let's just get into the video I haven't mixed my cocktail yet today, so we're going to do that together. How many of y'all have had this? This is the Ciroc Black Raspberry 5 times Distilled. They're so fancy. A product of France, so it's like French and stuff. From five French grapes. It's black raspberry flavored though, like... Is vodka made from grapes? Maybe vodka is made from grapes and I just don't know. Let's see what Siri knows. Hey Siri. Is vodka made from grapes? Okay. I found this on the web for is vodka made from grapes. Check it out. Hell, I could have Googled that myself. I don't know. She don't know either. Now, this has to be new. I have never seen this juice before today. It's the Welch's Sangria. Now, I was a little skeptical on getting a sangria flavored juice because I said it might just frustrate me if I'm sitting here drinking something that tastes sangria and it ain't making me feel like sangria. All right, so today's video is actually a request. I'm so upset. I just realized that I thought I was repurchasing the Fenty Hydrating Primer and this is just the regular Instant Retouch Primer, but we're going to use it today in and when I finish, I'm going to take it back and get my money back. Unless this one performs amazingly, which I don't know because I've never used it before. Today's video. It feels good. Today's video is about Ronald Gene Simmons. Someone in the comments recommended this video. And I do take recommendations if you just drop them down below and let me know what you want to hear. I go in no particular order. I just typically when I see the name, if it's someone I haven't heard of, I'll just give them a quick Google and see, you know, what they about and... This one was pretty, pretty interesting. You may have heard of him. I had not. When I read it, I was like, yeah, what the f I have to do this one because, yeah, wild little story. And I really hope because while I was writing down my notes, I kept accidentally writing Richard Simmons instead of Ronald Simmons. It's a difficult task focusing on the story and your makeup at the same time. Hopefully in one of those moments, I don't slip up and hit y'all with a couple Richards, but if I do... I mean, Ronald, especially once this vodka started hitting. Ronald Jane Simmons was born July 15th in 1940 in Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to Chicago. Everybody except Ronald. He was born to a couple by the name of Loretta and William Simmons. Unfortunately, when Ronald was just three years old, his father died of a stroke. And within a year, Loretta moved on. She found herself another William. She remarried. This William was a civil engineer for the U.S. Army. And so, you know, he had to travel. Three years after they married, the Army relocated William and his brand new family to Arkansas. Little Rock to be exact. I don't know if y'all know this, but my skin is doing a lot better and um, the universe is just blessing me, girl. I got some good old clear skin. I just ain't got a man. In 1957, at 17 years old, Ronald decides he's done with high school. He drops out and he enlists in the U.S. Navy. While stationed in Washington, D.C., he meets a lady by the name of Becky and he decides Becky was going to be bae, okay? She was that girl. The two get married just two years later over in New Mexico and decide that they want to, you know, be together forever and start a family. And everything is going well at first. Now, for whatever reason, Ronald decided that he no longer wanted to be in the Navy. He wanted to switch and go to the Air Force, which I didn't even know you could do that. Like, I thought branches of the military were like gangs because you can't just wake up one day a crib. Well, nobody wakes up a crib, but you can't just be a crib one day. And then decide, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm going to go be a blood. Like, I don't know. Apparently, you can do it. And that's what he did. Now, over the next 18 years, Ronald and his wife, Becky, 
They have a total of seven children. As a husband and a father, Ronald was described as being very domineering, very controlling. He he just ruled with an iron fist, right? Becky was getting tired of that shit. On the flip side, he was doing very, very good in the military. By 1979, when he retired, he had accumulated a bunch of awards for his military service. He had a bronze star medal. I'm not gonna pretend like I know how he got that. I don't. He also had a Republic of Vietnam gallantry cross and an Air Force ribbon for excellent marksmanship. So homeboy, he was pretty good in his career as a military military man. That eyebrow is really doing a lot, but we just gonna pretend. We gonna pretend that it's not. We gonna pretend that it's doing just all of the things that I wanted to do versus some of the things that I don't like. It's cool. Now on the outside, it looked as though the Simmons were just this one big happy family, you know, Brady Bunch style. He was a good provider, but he just wasn't a very, he just wasn't all that nice. And apparently he was a bit nasty too, because in 1981, allegations surfaced that Ronald had been sexually abusing his 17 year old daughter, Sheila, and that he'd actually fathered a child with her. And so, of course, this sparked a whole investigation. And once the investigation started, Ronald takes his family and flees New Mexico with his nasty ass. Sick of him. The couple returned to Arkansas, this time moving to Dover, Arkansas. They moved onto a large plot of land known as Mockingbird Hill. Over in Dover. Bars. I didn't even try to do that. Oh. Telling y'all, if this YouTube shit don't work out, I'm gonna be a rapper. A rapper or a drug dealer. One of the things. The property that the family relocated to, it was very isolated. It was very far off of the road, like the end of the driveway. There was no phone, there was no plumbing, and it was surrounded by a 10 foot makeshift fence. Ronald didn't want anybody to know what he had going on over in the house. Like he wanted complete privacy to continue to do the horrible things that he did as a horrible human being. Like, sir. The residence itself, it consisted of two older style mobile homes that were pushed together, like put together to make one house to house, you know, him and all the children and his wife, Becky. Once the two settle into Dover, Arkansas, Ronald works a string of low paying jobs, just odd uh, jobs around the town. At one point he was working as an accounts receivable clerk for Woodline Motor Freight but he had to quit the job there because really he was about to be fired. There were numerous reports of inappropriate sexual advances from him to the ladies. And so he decided, you know what, I quit. It's like, sir, they was gonna fire your ass anyway, but go off. From there, he got a job at Sinclair Mini Mart. He worked there for about a year and a half. And then on December 18th, 1987, he quit there as well. He didn't say why, he just decided he was no longer gonna be an employee. 10 days later on December 28th, 1987, Ronald Gene Simmons drove to Russellville, Arkansas back to the law firm that he previously worked. He walked into the office and shot the receptionist four times in the head, killing her of course instantly. She was a young 24 year old woman by the name of Kathy Kendrick. Richard had previously been infatuated with Kathy. He made a couple of advances toward her and she, she wasn't interested so she rejected him. You know, some people just don't take rejection well. And it's like, mister, you got a whole wife at the house and other than your fish, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. Like, but some people just don't take rejection well. They feel like everybody's supposed to want them. Newsflash, bitch. That's not the case. Now, as if that isn't bad enough, he did not stop there. He actually didn't start there either, but we'll get to that in just a moment. After he left the law firm, he drove to the motor company that he previously worked at, walked inside and shot a previous co-worker by the name of J.D. Chaffin. He also shot the owner of the shop, but he did not kill him, he only wounded him. The frightened workers at the oil company, they immediately phoned police and let them know that they need to get here right away because home went and lost his shit. Fortunately, Ronald still, he still wasn't done. So he leaves there and heads to a third destination, the Sinclair Mini Mart, which is his most recent job. These mini palettes by Huda Beauty is just, they just, they just, they're just that girl. Like, I love them. 
Once he got to the third location, which was a Sinclair Mini Mart, he shot two of their employees. They both lived. They just were injured. And his last stop was another former workplace, which was the Woodline Motor Freight Company, where he shot a woman by the name of Joyce. And then once he shot Joyce, he literally sat there with the other secretary and tells her, I just wanted to kill Joyce, just Joyce. I mean, it's like, sir, I'm still afraid of you. What do you mean? Like... I'm supposed to feel comfortable now? No. The police are dialed and he literally just sits there making small talk with the other secretary, waiting on the police. I know she must have been afraid. I don't know if I would have stayed. I would have been like, you want some water? Can I get you some tea? And then my ass would have been trying to ricochet out of the bathroom window. I'm trying to tell you because you might snap. Like, I don't, how am I supposed to believe you're not going to shoot my ass too? No, I'm not taking no chances. At least I don't think I would be willing to take no chances. You never know how you would react in certain situations. But me, sitting here with a clear head and a belly full of vodka. I don't know if it's all that clear. It's pretty filled with the vodka, actually. But you know what I mean. Anyway, the police arrive and Ronald hands over his weapon and surrenders literally without incident. He's just like, my name is Ronald and this is the T. And so they take him down to the station and the police investigators take a trip down to his house just to check out the scene, I guess. They put him in a holding cell and they go forth to his home. Once they get there, investigators realize that Ronald had begun his killing spree with his own family nearly a week before. At some point between December 18th and December 21st, Ronald took the children out. It was four kids still living at the house. He took them out to the yard and he instructed them to build a four foot deep ditch. And he told them that this was gonna be an outhouse. The children, they obliged because he, was, he wasn't he was that nice of, of a dad. So they just pretty much did it. On the morning of December 22nd, Ronald took a 22 caliber pistol and he shot Becky's wife in the head, killing her. He also shot the couple's oldest son, Ronald Simmons Jr. And then he strangled his three-year-old granddaughter, Barbara. Like, it's a special place in hell for a motherfucker that can strangle, uh, strangled, look at my English, that can strangle a three-year-old. Ronald then waits for the other four children who still lived at home to arrive home from school. When they got there, he told them that he had presents for them, but he wanted to give them to them one at a time. One at a time, he takes the children, strangles them, and holds them underwater in a rain barrel until they are deceased. He does this to all four of them, like, hmm. <sighs> They were 8, 11, 14, and 17 years old. He takes the bodies of the seven victims out into the yard where they had dug the four foot ditch and drops them inside, all seven, and goes about his day like literally nothing had happened. Fast forward to four days later on December 26th, about midday, the, return, the remaining of his family members, like the rest of the kids who had grown up, got married, their spouses and their children. They show up for their annual Christmas visit. Richard's son, Billy, and his wife, Renata, they, they arrive first to the house. As soon as they get there, Ronald shoots them both in the head, killing them instantly, and then strangles their 20-month-old son, William Jr. Shortly after, his daughter, Sheila, she arrives with her husband. Now, this is the daughter that he had had a child with. So Sheila and her husband, Dennis, they arrive at the house with Sylvia, which is the six-year-old daughter that Ronald had fathered. The couple also had a 21-month-old child together, Michael. Ronald does the same to Sheila and her family. He shoots the father and the mother, and then he proceeds to strangle the children, both six-year-old and the 21-month-old child. There was no more space in the ditch for the rest of the family members. And so Ronald took them place them underneath the Christmas tree, the decorated Christmas tree, among the wrapped Christmas gifts. He covered all of the bodies with coats, except Sheila's and the two infants. He covered Sheila's body in their finest tablecloth and placed her under the tree alongside everyone else. He took the two infants, wrapped them in plastic, and left them in abandoned cars that were parked down at the end of the driveway. Now, after this, Ronald takes his ass down to a local bar has drinks like nothing ever happened. And then after he left the bar, he returned home with beer 
and continued to drink in the living room right there among the bodies of his family that he had murdered, watching television as if, as if he was not surrounded by the dead bodies of his family. Like what the, what is wrong with you? Oh, Shawty say it's all hers, but her liner don't match. Child, this liner look like me and my sister. I'm five foot 10, my sister's five too, baby. This is me, this is her, this shit looks, I gotta fix it. Let me just drag her out a little bit. I mean, they not twins, but they sisters. Or at least first cousins. You know what? I'm not going nowhere today, so. After the discoveries were made, Ronald was sent to Arkansas State Hospital over in Little Rock, Arkansas for a competency evaluation. There, the psychiatrist found him completely sane and capable of standing trial. Kudos to you, Miss Doctor Lady or Sir, because he was just evil, okay? Where are my lashes? Ronald had two trials, two separate trials. After the first one, he was convicted on the deaths of Kathy and JD. He was sentenced to death by lethal injection, plus 147 years. It's like, if the injection is lethal, that means it's going to kill him. So it's like, how are you going to do 147 years after the fact? I mean, I'm not opposed to it. He deserved all the time that he got. I'm just, I just, I don't understand. He did not appeal this, nor did he object to it, like at all. He knew he deserved it. His second trial concluded in February of the next year. Now, after that trial, he was found guilty of 14 counts of capital murder, which was for all of his family that he had killed. Now, in his final trial hearing, his statement was, to those of you who object, the death penalty in my particular case anything short of death will be cruel and unusual punishment so i guess he wanted to take the easy way out see when i first read that i thought maybe he was like okay yeah i deserve the death penalty because i'm a horrible person but when you think about it he said anything short would be cruel and unusual punishment meaning i guess if y'all don't go ahead and get me out of here and i have to sit and rot in jail like that's cruel and unusual that's not what he wanted while on death row he had to be separated from all the other inmates because his life was constantly threatened not just because of his crime but because he refused to appeal or try to get his sentence reduced or to get off of death row he refused to appeal his death sentence the other prisoners on death row felt like he was hurting their chances of being heard and he was damaging their chances at beating their own death sentences i don't know if i like this look yet i'm not a cut crease kind of gal i can't really even tell how it's looking because i'm looking at it through vodka goggles and so we just gonna see when i sober up if i'm cute or not on june 25th 1990 Ronald Gene Simmons, he died by lethal injection. It was the method that he had chosen. Now, I don't know if it's just the thing where they live or what. I didn't know that they let you choose. I don't know what his other options were at the time. I just know that they say that he chose his own method, which was lethal injection. None of his family attended. None of them claimed his body afterwards. And so he was, he was buried in a potter's field, which is like this big mass grave for unclaimed bodies. Now, his reasoning for why he committed these crimes, it was never made clear, but there were a couple of speculations. One of which being that he had overheard that his wife was planning to leave him. She was planning a divorce. A couple weeks before the murders, she, Becky had written their oldest son, the 29 year old, a letter that said, I don't wanna live the rest of my life with dad. I am a prisoner here and the kids too. And every time I think of freedom, I want out as soon as possible just kind of sad so she probably was really like ready to take her kids and go and then he pulled this shit last minute he should have just started with himself he was quoted saying that he wanted to hurt everyone that had hurt him y'all know this little this little shorter hair with the little flip skirt it's my old secretary of the state first lady hair okay i'll be feeling real classy like I should have the little glasses on and be sitting at the front desk. Like, hey, sir, how you doing? Sign in, please. That ain't no damn. That's just the secretary. That ain't the secretary of the goddamn state. The other theory was also that Sheila, his daughter that he had a daughter with, she he had still been making advances toward her. And the fact that she moved out, remarried, had another baby, like sent him into a rage 
which all of these things could have been contributing factors because he killed everybody. He said he wanted to kill everybody that had hurt him. So all of these things could have been contributing factors as to why he snapped off and did what he did. Also, if you remember, I know some of the rage had to be specifically targeted towards Sheila because remember, everybody else he threw a coat over, but he put their finest tablecloth over Sheila's body and then wrapped the baby she had where her husband, granted, he wrapped both babies, but wrapped her baby up in plastic and put it in a car, like separated it from the family. So I don't know. I feel like he felt rejection from Becky. He found out she was planning to leave him. And then Kathy was rejecting him down to the workplace. His daughter, who rejected him rightfully so, had moved on and she was happy with her new husband and they had had a baby. They were living their best life and he just couldn't take it because then nobody want his old ugly ass. And so he snapped. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate all of the comments, likes, subscribes, low key the dislikes and hate comments too because y'all y'all have been increasing your girl's engagement as well uh -huh. jokes on you bitch but real quick a lot of you in the last video you did say you like the idea of me running down the product list it'll also be listed in the description box and so right quick we just gonna go through everything i used today by accident i used the Fenty beauty pro filter instant retouch primer i thought it was the hydrating one but i ordered the wrong one offline and i mean it's cute or whatever so i might keep it i like the way it felt a lot I'm gonna keep it. Today's foundation was the Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation. I am the color 330 warm. I love this foundation so much. It's the luminous foundation. Very good for dry skin if you have dry skin. This is for us dry faced girls. Concealer was born this way, two faced concealer. I'm the color golden beige because I'm a golden beige goddess, okay? For eyebrows, I use the e.l.f. cream eyebrow cream. And the color espresso along with the elf duo brush you really could use any old spoolie though but i mean that brush is only three dollars so it ain't like you, you know break an arm and a leg for it i use the nars soft matte complete concealer as an eyeshadow base only because i bought this and my face is really dry i should have listened to miss diane down to the sephora who said girl your skin kind of dry you might not want to use that and i was like girl i got this and then now i can only use it as an eyeshadow base because I didn't have it. I didn't. Setting powder was the Beauty Bakery Flower in the color Cassava, aka yellow. The brush that I used to press that in was the Morphe M536 brush that I just went down here and did a couple of them with. Yeah, that was her. I always put this in the description box. The Genoan Company Sponge Microfiber Velvet Sponge is my favorite to apply foundation because it barely soaks up any product whatsoever it's only six dollars you can get it on beautylish you can get it on the juno and company website i think they even sell it at target now they do it at my local targets so i'm gonna go get me some more of these girls but i mean she looks brand new still she's very durable i'm gonna wrap up the face stuff and then get into the eyeshadows last to bronze i use the becca i i need to look up how this is pronounced because i always struggle i'm like i don't know if it's i panama or i panema sun whichever the case is this one and then this of course is the morphe m143 jumbo deluxe fan brush now i didn't highlight i just realized i didn't highlight because i'm so used to not highlighting because i ain't been highlighting lately but anyway that's another story to set i use the morphe luminous setting spray i've been liking this lately it's real cute for lashes i got another box of these they're the i envy 3d collection by kiss my favorite style right now is the kpei 109 that's I've, I've been i've been wearing them out on these i've been going by the store and picking these up i'm buying them in bulk okay i love them so much the eyeliner i used was the lollipop liner by beauty bakery just regular old black last but not least eyeshadow palettes i used today were the huda beauty mini neon and then girl maybe i should turn you around so the girls can see the jaclyn hill volume 2 palette i've been using it all week y'all i really really like it i would say it's as good as the first one but the shimmers this is the thing about morphe i find that they're shimmers like i could never use the shimmer i just I try everything. I try wetting my brush. I try applying with my finger. It never works for me. But in her volume one palette, her shimmers were great. But this one, the yellow shimmer I dipped into, I didn't like so much. In the mini palette, this light pink is the one that I use as a transition shade. And then this purple is the one I used on the outer corner. This shade that's all broken ghetto and dug out is this shade here that I used on the inner portion of the top lid. When I got to the bottom lid, I used this light pink at first just to you know lay down some groundwork from the Jacqueline palette I used Lolly Mama in the center to like bring the two together and then I used this deep purple which is called Not My Journey 
on the waterline at the bottom. On the inner innermost corner, I use this shade called I'm In It. I love it so much. It's like a minty iridescent shade. It's very, very pretty. I really like it a lot, but really you can't tell the difference that much between that inner corner and the other shade that I have on the innermost corner of the lid. Really this whole look could have been done out of this one with the exception of the deep purple on the waterline. My mascara was the Fenty Beauty Full Frontal Mascara in the shade Cause I'm Black. Ayy. Is it still Black History Month? I think so. Anyway, that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your positive, beautiful comments down below. All of your likes, shares, subscriptions, okay? I love you all, all 16,000 of y'all. All of y'all, I do. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.